Good morning. Yesterday I received a question from someone who follows me here on Facebook Live about her hips. And she was wondering about um, a hip issue she had, whether it was, like, or her knee rather, was falling inward. And she was wondering if that was in fact a hip issue or if it was an adductor weakness issue. So I decided to create a little something for you guys to kind of explore this. Now keep in mind, this is a big, big note. Keep in mind that I, I didn't see her move. I know, I, I know little, if anything, about the person who asked the question. So I can't address it specifically. I can't answer it specifically, but I can share it from a concept perspective and a principle perspective so that you can explore your own self and movement. And then that will probably help you become more aware because as I've always said, you can't resolve anything that's under your level of awareness. And that's really what all these practices are about is you're becoming aware of how you're moving rather than just pumping out some exercises, like really paying attention to what is so that you can resolve the thing that is the thing as opposed to just having relief of symptoms, okay? So the aim is, is to really resolve stuff. Symptom relief is great, it's the start, but if you, if you wanna have long-term change, you just can't keep changing, you can't just keep relieving symptoms. You actually have to recognize what's correlated to it happening, okay? So let's take a look here. So I brought Stan, the lower part of him. So when the knee, whoops, when we're coming forward, coming into warrior one, let's say for example, and then this knee falls inward, right? Because that's what it looks like. This knee is falling inward. We have to remember is that the knee, the top of the knee is the part, is part of the hip, right? So the femur is part of the hip. So when this leg is falling, the knee appears to be falling inward, it's actually more often something that is coming from up here. Now it could also be something that's coming from down here because the bottom of the knee is also part of the ankle. So there's a relationship between what's going on between the ankle and the knee and what's going on between the hip and the knee. So could it be the uh, could it be a hip issue? Absolutely, it could be, could it be a hip issue. Could it be an ankle issue? Absolutely, it could be an ankle issue. So that's why it's so vital and why I love to work with people at the hips because it's such a large joint and has such an impact whether it's up into the pelvis in the SI area and piriformis area or lower back area or whether it's down into the knee. So when we can, can, when we can resolve that, and a lot of people have helped come out of knee surgeries or prevent knee surgeries, not that the aim's to prevent them, but they wanted to prevent them, whatever, whatever that, like whatever, when there was knee issues, there were always hip issues. And so when we could get into there, we, we would be able to help people a lot with what was going on with their knees. And then when we were, when we were able to connect them down to the foot, then things really started to take off for them because we walk around all day, right? We, well, most of the time we walk around and that leg is moving through that hip socket and this foot is landing on the floor, right? Or on the ground. And so where this foot lands in part has to do with what's going on through the gait cycle of this leg in the hip. And that's a very simple perspective on it, but the, the two are connected. This is the bottom of the kinetic chain. So these two are connected. So we have to provide connection to them, okay? So now what, does she have an adductor weakness issue? I have no clue, I have no idea. So what we're gonna focus in on is just better movement and then she and you can decide for yourself what's going on through your muscular and fascial systems as you do the movement, okay? So let's move Mr. Stan back and let's get into a practice. So we're going to need a strap and a block or sorry, this is a ball, and a block, okay? So I'd like you just to start here, and we're just gonna settle into a breathing. And now I'm sitting in a kneeling position only because that's kind of what I feel like doing. You can be on a bolster, you can be on a chair, you could be sitting cross-legged, but I do recommend that you're here, right? Because so many people are unable to sit on the floor. Even if you think you can sit on the floor, come up onto a block, come up onto a bolster. See what the difference is when your spine just naturally lifts up because you're in a better position between your pelvis and your legs. Just give that a roll. So with that, I want you to settle into your breathing. And I want you simply to notice where you're at. It's very tempting just to jump into exercise, to jump into movement, 
And even if you're a runner or a cyclist and you're getting back out there now that the weather, at least where I am, is starting to get better, take a pause and just notice, like, where are you at? How was your day? How are you with your day? If you're joining me at about 5 a.m., how was your sleep? How are you now that you're up? Right? And just start to notice yourself through your day. Because our energy shifts and changes. You can take a look at the Ayurveda clock. You can take a look at the Chinese medicine clock. Things shift and change through the day. So really, just pay attention. All right. So this might seem like a strange place to begin given when we're talking about hips, but we're going to begin with the shoulders. And we're going to take the arms up overhead with your strap, and we're just going to take those arms up and circle them around. All right, and then other way. Easy, 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 easy breathing. Right, and so this is where we get to start. Like you're, you're watching yourself in the screen probably, right? And this is where you get to first start to see, is your movement actually happening at the joint area where you want it to move? Okay, good. So now we're gonna take a side bend. Good. Now, without har being hard with that sitting bone that you're moving away from, just allow that weight to be in there. So we're not coming off of it like this, because we want to allow this to be somewhat um, settled so that we can move through here nicely. And obviously on this side too. And then come on up. Good. And then come this way. Yeah. I sometimes like to think about a beach ball that I'm coming around on this side or simply just to feel my, my pelvis on the ground. There have been more people also asking me about Varasana, so sitting in hero's pose. And when I talk to them further, um, or if I actually see them move, if we're in a session together, it really is interesting how um, how impacted uh, their hips are. Yeah. So when we can start to get hips working better, much can change. All right. So now you're here on your back, and let's start to play with taking that ankle up onto the knee. Okay. Now remember, the idea here is I want you to pay attention more than anything. Pay attention to this how this leg bone is moving in the socket. Good. Ankle comes onto the knee. Okay. So your pelvis, the tendency. The tendency here is to be moving your, want to move the pelvis like this. So when the leg comes up, see how I, you can see the difference between my shirt and my pants? That wants to happen. And notice how the, artic the primary articulating joint, which is the leg bone in the hip socket, that's not moving, right? What's moving is between my pelvis and my ribs. Yeah, that's what we don't want to have happen. Right? We want to focus in on that motion there, right? The leg bone and the pelvis. Okay, so just check in for yourself there and then Check in for yourself on the other side. Good. Okay, now from here, come back and we're going to take the ball underneath the hips. And now you can do this. Your wrists might not like this so much. So if your wrists aren't, are kind of like, mm, I'm not interested, then come onto your back and just take the ball underneath here and then start to play around there. Okay and just find little points of tenderness that you can work with, okay? So a lot of times when people, I've seen this a lot, where people will be like, well, yeah, my wrists, they're not liking this. And then I c continue to see them doing it. <laughs> I'm like, why are you doing it? Well, I mean, I still need to do it. It's like, well, actually, no, you don't need to do it. You can still get benefit, a lot of benefit. And in fact, you'll get more benefit because your wrists aren't bothering you, right? Even if it's normal and even though, well, you can kind of, suck it up and go through it, don't, don't, right? Because if you're sucking it up in a position like this, then you're telling your nervous system and your whole system in general that, well, you know what, you're gonna suck it up. 
right? And that just creates more bracing and gripping patterns, right? It seems like such a benign kind of thing, and I guess in a way it is, but if you really, really wanna feel better, why not practicing feel better, right? You know, as they say, the destination is the way, right? You're not gonna stop doing this ball and your wrists feel better. It's like, why not just get into a position where your wrists feel better? Come into a position where you're not having to suck it up and then maybe you won't have to suck it up. Yeah, you know what I mean? So build the habit of not sucking it up. Build the habit of ease. Build the habit of, of um, not sucking it up. Okay, now if you've got the range here, then come into this position. You know, it's, it's, and it's interesting because I'll have people say to me, you know, I've been doing all this stuff to reduce pain and it's not working. And then I actually see how they're doing the movement, like the process by which, and never mind the compensation strategies, but it's just the pushing out and sucking it up. And it's like, well, that's what you're teaching yourself to do. That's the habit you're building. And then someone will say, but I've always sucked it up. And I'm like, yeah, and it likely served you for a long time right? Like I get it. I used to be an elite athlete as a teenager. I knew how to push so hard that I could see black. I knew how to do that. It served me well in that time of my life. Guess what? It does not serve me now to push so hard when I am doing a yoga practice or going for a run or walking with my kids. It does not serve me to push so hard to see black. Yeah? It does not serve me. So I can channel that energy that I've got, that very driven that very ambitious, that very focused energy on something else that does serve me, right? So your ability to suck up is a really, really, really great skill. It's just don't use it to attempt to get out of pain because it, it, from what I have seen, it's not a sustainable strategy. It doesn't actually shift a whole lot inside, yeah? So food for thought. That's just speaking from the trenches. Good, all right, we're gonna play around a little bit more. You'll see that I'm coming onto the outside of the uh, outside of the hip. Now you don't have to have that ankle up. You could just be here, right? So we're just finding some of those areas that might be a little bit tender. Okay, now we're gonna come back onto our backs now. Good, and now from here, let's see what happens. Ankle comes on up. What's that rotation like now? Notice the awareness that you have of that leg bone in the hip socket, yeah? And see if you're wanting to drive the movement from your foot, yeah? Are you trying to do this? Are you leading the movement by moving your foot? And you can see that the foot does move, but we actually, this is the movement we're trying to cultivate, right? And so the foot is just along for the ride where the leg bone is the articulating joint, okay? And then we start to play here just by playing around with this leg bone in the hip socket. So when people ask me, you know, is this an adductor issue or is it a hip issue? And it could be both, right? The question I like to ask is, well, if the adductor is so-called weak, then why does it feel the need to be weak? If I could personalize it a bit, yeah? Why is it not responding? So I could like hammer at the adductor and make it work and make it work and make it work and make it work. But in reality, the question is, is why is it not working? And what you'll often find is when the hip, hip issue, like when the leg bone moves better in the hip socket, that adductor naturally fires on its own. Naturally. We've got lots of stories of physiotherapists or physical therapists who have different techniques they use with their patients to you know, fire up muscles to get the muscles to work. And then after they learn about these movement patterns that I teach, the muscles just start to fire on their own, right? Because where the issue is, is rarely where the issue is, right? But when we get ourselves moving better and reduce compensation, things start to work better. Okay, so now from here, let's come into a lunge. So we're here, good. And we're gonna take ourselves forward, okay? So the articulating joint, I'll turn in a sec, but the articulating joint is here and then here and here, as well as on the other side. So I want you just to pay attention here. So notice if as you're coming forward, this wants to happen, right? And so remember Stan, right? How the leg bone went in, right? We could take a look at it from the foot perspective, but the, the hip has so many ranges of motion. 
So now I want you to pay attention. You don't need to set your, your leg or anything like that. Just be aware of what you have. Good. Then as you start to move, notice what happens in your movement. So as you start to move, does this happen to create, and it's likely to create some type of balance in some form. That's why we compensate the way we do. So as you're moving, just pay attention. What's the true range of motion with you just being really easy with your leg? Remember, we're not trying to create bracing patterns. So I'm not a huge fan, without seeing you, of course, without seeing you, I'm not a huge fan of like setting and then moving, right? Because that's not a very responsive patterning that we're trying to create, yeah? So it's like, notice where you're at here. Now, like maybe your movement's only this far. Maybe your movement's this far. But can you, can you get a feel for where this leg wants to come in, right? Now, we can play around with this a bit. Take your hand to the outer leg. Gently push it out. Gently push it out. See, I've got my hand in the front of my hip, my hand on the outer leg, so I can feel the leg bone in the hip socket. Then move, right? And can I, I don't need to push hard into this hand, but I'm just reminding the leg, just reminding the leg of where it's meant to be as we move. Right, that's how we get to change patterns. But I'm not setting anything. I'm not locking anything in. I'm not anchoring anything in. And then say it at about this range, you feel that coming out or you feel that falling in. It's like, okay, that's what's happening. So let's come back. Let's find the range where you do have nice, pure movement and that's where you get to work. Invariably, someone will say to me, but, but that, that, how do I improve my range? And I'll say, just keep practicing. It will, it, will, it will improve naturally if you allow it to, right? Give the body what it needs and it will start to shift. I see it all the time. And if that's not what's happening for you, then join me in Susie's resource library or come join me for three months where we can really, really see what's going on in your system. Because these Facebook lives, I cannot see anybody. I can see all the comments. I can see the who's watching me, but I can't see you. You can see me, but that's it. Yeah. So I, I, I won't, I only can do so much, right? Because this isn't a template. <laughs> all right. Let's take ourselves to the side. Now, again, watch here. This is the tendency, right? The tendency is that, and then the tendency is, okay, pull in and lift up. And then they look like this, like, and then that's, then that happens, right? So then that's the habit you build. That's the neuromuscular pattern that you build. I'm not being mean, by the way. I'm not trying to knock other teachers. I'm just sharing what I see. So here, and you have to have a sense of humor if you work with me, by the way. All right, so then here, good. Yeah, I'm not laughing at anybody. I'm just having a bit of fun. Okay. There you go, and then coming on up. So do you see that? So of course, as I come over, there's going to be a little bit of movement over to one side, but there, that's different than that, right? Now I'm exaggerating it, but there's some of you out there who'll be doing that. And because likely it's just an awareness thing that you're just not aware, no one's ever shown it to you, you're just not cluing into it, no biggie. There's stuff I'm doing right now, I have no clue I'm doing. And even though I can see myself in the screen, you can see it and I can't because I'm not watching it. There's so much that's under my level of awareness. Holy smokes. That's what kids are great for. They help you become aware of stuff. Right? And it's awesome because then you're aware of it. Then you can change it. That's why awareness is so good. Okay, let's do one more. Now, I will say that sometimes I don't necessarily like what I become aware of. And that's part of the process. <laughs> you might not like it, but the genie can't go back into the bottle. So then you work with it, right? You work with it. Okay, good. Lovely. Okay, so now you're starting to get a little bit of understanding and feel of these guys in here. So let's come back up. We're going to do some movements that you are familiar with, but we're just going to focus in on them in a very specific way. Okay, so... Here, I'm gonna come up close. My head's gonna chop off in a moment. But here, I want you to pay really close attention to the leg bone moving in the pelvis, right? I realize that it might seem to be very simple, but seriously, what will happen is that someone will wanna lead with their foot or they'll wanna lead with their pelvis 
to do that movement. And so it's really, I really want you to notice what that range actually is and notice if the front of your hip wants to fire like crazy. Okay, and then the other side. Whoops, that was a nice pop. Okay, and so that's where I want you to really notice. Are you gripping and bracing further up the chain? Are you needing to put your leg out like this and going, oh, oops, my pelvis is here. I better suck myself back up. Well, that's a great compensation on top of a compensation. So really, really, really pay attention there. Okay, so now from here, you're getting a, a greater feel about what's going on through your leg bones. And so we're gonna be here. And now from, from this position, we're gonna take those legs and rotate them. Now a big important part of this is that people will talk about, well, I positioned my foot in a different space. And what I, and I don't, I'm not arguing with where you put your foot. But what I want you to pay attention to just for the fun of it is that your foot is the bottom of the chain. So where our, when, when a lot of times our cueing is about the foot, I want you to think about how the foot is landing where it's landing because the leg bone is doing the movement. Much like when we're walking and the, the, the leg's moving through the hip socket, that foot in part is being placed because of how that leg bone is moving in the hip socket. So really allow your foot to be the, the, the end of what's going on at your hip. Really think about that. So if you're teaching other people, play around with actually introducing them to their leg bone and pelvis connection, right? And then doing that. Years ago, people would tell me, Susie, no one wants to know about the hips. They're not aware of their hips. And that's why we cue the feet. I'm like, well, that's kind of silly, isn't it? Why not help them become aware of their hips? Okay, so now we've rotated the leg bones out. Pay attention to what's just going on with your pelvis, right? And so if your pelvis has come forward into an anterior tilt, or if you're wanting to tuck it back this way, and let's just take your hands to the outside and bring it down, yeah? And then notice if as you've come down, your shoulders have come up, yeah? Now I'm just gonna gently move my legs back, feel that motion of the leg bones in the hip socket. Good, and then again, notice if you wanna use the outside of your leg bone, your peroneal muscles, Notice if you want to use the bottom of your feet. Notice if you want to use your pelvic floor. And I'm not saying any of those things are wrong. Just notice if they're kicking in more than they were or more than they have to. Okay, good. Now, come on up. All right, now let's take a strap here. We're going to take the strap around the legs. And, and while you're doing this, just feel what the legs are doing now, right? Like notice what those guys are doing and how they're, and how they're feeling and what they're feeling. And if there's any extraneous stuff building up in your back or your SI or your piriformis or um, further up to your ribs, like notice if there's, there's an increase in sensation to the point where you're thinking, wow, this practice really isn't working for me. Perfect. That's the awareness you need to have, yeah? That's what you need to be thinking about. So now the thing to think about is maybe it's not the practice, maybe it's part of how you're moving. Yeah, yeah. And so then play around with, do you really have the range available in the sockets or are you moving further than you need to be moving? Right, so there, so hips, knees, hips, knees, ankles. Hips, knees, ankles. Now I'm not pushing out into the strap yet. I'm just going down and coming up so it's not this so see how this hip joint isn't moving it's just the knee and the ankle I want that hip joint to move now it's also not this right it's this okay all right now we're gonna gently press our legs out into the strap really really gently let me come up a little bit closer so watch the knees so it looks like the knees are doing the movement but the motion is actually the leg bone moving in the hip socket. Yeah. Good. So have a feel of that. Good. So why I've got my hands in the front of my hips is I've come down into hip flexion, but now that I'm here, I'm not dropping any further, and my legs are just going out this way. So I have my hands here 
just to connect in with the front of my hips that they aren't gripping any more than they need to, right? They're just be, I'm just here. But as I move my legs wide, there's, they're not connect, they're not contracting more. Okay, good. Now bring that out. So we're yesterday I did a, I asked people about um, half moon and lots of you said, yes, show us some stuff from half moon. So I'm working on that, but this is a really good lead up to that. Like some of you might be thinking this is really slow and boring, Susie. But if you can play around and really get a sense of what's going on through your hips and how they connect with your feet, holy moly, coming into half moon is going to be a lot of fun. All right, so here, now we're going to just gently press the block. Okay, now these are adductors, right? This is where the block is, the meat of the adductors. I haven't put it down here by the knees. I've purposefully put it up in the meat of the adductors just about like just a tiny little bit under my pubic bone here. And I'm also not squeezing so hard that the wood is going to be squeezed out of the block. Yeah, I'm just holding it. All right, and then we're just going to go down and up. So you're going to probably notice that one of these is a little bit better feeling than the other. Now you could take the, the it more narrow if you want. I prefer it this way for my own self. So you decide where you prefer it. And you may even prefer the strap over the block. So choose the prop now that you would prefer, strap or block. And we'll come back and continue to do this. I'm going to stick with the block because I'm very curious about how this block is working in my hip today. And how it actually feels further up my chain. Yeah. I'm consistently amazed. You'd think I wouldn't be so amazed many, many years later. Like I've been at this for like almost 30 years, but it's, I'm always amazed at how, when I continue to move better down through here, how much lighter I feel further up. Like it really is astonishing, really is astonishing. Okay, good. All right. So now from here, we're going to take our legs back wide again. Okay, rotate the leg bones and then come down and notice if there's anything that you're noticing that's different. Good, okay, and now from here, we're gonna keep that pelvis level and rotate that leg bone and then that leg, that foot drops, okay? And notice if you wanted to do that even so slightly, right? So you can see this, the um, seam of my pants here is that you can see how that seam of my pants moves and you can see the bottom of my shirt, you can see that moves. Right? And so we, do, we often do that because something's up through the hip or there's some tissue limitation and through the back of the leg or we're just not aware. We're just kind of mindless in that moment and we do that. Right? And so just pay attention. Good. And then we're going to play and come into warrior two. Okay, now when you're here, there's different theories about what you should do with this back leg and the foot. Where I want you to focus is is that whatever you do with that back leg or that foot, play around with what goes on at that hip. See if you can work it from there just for fun. Yes, you can adjust a lot of stuff by just inverting and everting the foot, but I want, if you're gonna play with the back leg just for fun, play with it from a rotational perspective, just for fun, okay? And then can you do that without the pelvis moving, right? Because you've, you've, you've come from here, You've rotated your leg bone and your pelvis has come along with it a little bit. Now you get to kind of just, just play. This is just purely, this is not like, this is the way you do warrior two. It's just play around from just a purely biomechanical movement perspective. And then as you do that, does your pelvis want to move? Does your leg want to fall in? So when you play around with this leg, does this one leg want to compensate for what is or is not happening there, right? It just becomes an interesting exploration as you notice. And as you notice what goes on further up the chain, of course, stay in a range that doesn't increase pain, doesn't increase strain, all that kind of stuff. But it just becomes very, very curious. I'm just gonna hold the wall. Very, very curious. Can you do that movement? And then does this leg wanna fall in as you do that? Right, it will just let you know that there's something up and through here, this leg compared to this leg. Yeah, it just becomes really curious. And that was really the name of the game, yeah? I remember, when I first read somewhere, I don't know if it was the Hatha Yoga Pratikapa or if it was what it was, it was one of the texts I was reading about how asana 
is sitting comfortably and still. And it was one of those moments where like, for the longest time, I never understood why asana was translated into pose or posture, and na that never made sense to me. And then when I read that it's sitting comfortably and still, it's like, oh, oh, okay, I get it now. Because when you're sitting comfortably and still, you're not in like a bunch of tightness and tension. So why would you practice in tightness and tension if that's not the purpose of asana? So we're looking at this from this exploratory place that's not tension based, that's not tightness based, that's not braced, gripped based. Yeah? I mean, unless you want to build those characteristics. And I, and I, I don't mean to be facetious, but if build, practice the way you want to be. Yeah? So if you want to be tight and tense, then practice tight and tense. If you want to be more at ease, practice more at ease. If you want to be sitting comfortably and still, then practice in a place that's sitting comfortably and still. And then we're going to just play around with this leg motion in the back and see what happens with the pelvis. Yeah. And if you want to lean forward or something further up happens, Whoa, this side's a little bit windier for me. Okay. Good, and then come on up. Okay, and then come here into standing and just notice what you feel. I'm consistently amazed at how much more ease and strength I experience. All right, so now let's come into high lunge. So I'm gonna just stay forward with you guys. And I'm gonna bring the leg back, yeah? So I'm here, good. And then as I do that, what I want you to pay attention to and yourself is does the leg fall inward? So I'm swinging this leg back and then here. So when you did that, did that happen, right? So if that's the case, maybe place your hand on the outside of the leg and then just bring the leg back a little bit. Watch if you want to brace from the bottom part of your shin. Yeah, and then bring the leg back a bit more. Yeah. Now, of course, as you've got one, as you're stepping consciously back, you might have a little bit of like, you know, my an your ankle does that. There might be a little bit of that with the leg, but it's different than falling it right, right in like that. Good. All right, and then come into cowboy surrender, also known as goal post or cactus arms, and then bring the arms right up. Now, when you did that with the arms, what happened with your leg? So bring the arms back down again. And then just notice, don't try and change anything in your leg. See, that's what I find often happens, is I might make a comment to someone, and then rather than them just noticing what I noticed, they all of a sudden try to change it. But they don't know what they're changing. They're trying to make something right, but they don't know what it was that they were doing in the first place. Right? So. Really try to notice what it, what it is so you can be aware of it. Because I might be flatly wrong. Like that's the thing, I am wrong a lot, a lot. So just because I'm seeing something doesn't mean it's the thing that actually needs to shift, right? So then you can practice and say, nope, that's not the one I wanna work on. It's like, okay, that's great. But be aware, you gotta be aware rather than just taking it and taking the lesson, you've got to be aware of what's going on in your own body, right? It kind of relates to this notion of how we can have too much information overload. I do not agree at all. I don't think there's information overload. I think we need to improve our internal filter so we can determine the information that's coming in, what's useful and what's not. It's up to us to have that internal filter and to keep that clear. Right? So you're just noticing how your arm position is moving relative to that hip, right? So as these arms come up, do you get more grippy in through that hip and does it want to fall inward? Yeah, and just play with that. Don't just come into this, some final position because someone said something or you saw it in a book. It's all very interesting and what they say I'm sure is very interesting. But ultimately, in, build your internal filter, build your internal locus of control.
Feel internally what's going on. Let me tell you, it is going to change your life when you do. Like, seriously. Seriously, it will change your life. You will feel so much calmer. You will feel more at ease. You'll be stronger. How the energy moves through you will be so much different. And the, the subtlety inside of you, like just the sensitivity you have to the environment around you in a really, really positive way will, will be accentuated. It's really cool. And of course, I'm speaking directly from my own experience, but also all these people that I've worked with. Right? Good. And so now just standing here and feeling what you're feeling. Lovely. All right, so now you might be ready to carry on with the rest of your practice. I'm going to come down into a sitting position on a block to finish up with some breath. And then you might be like me where I'm going to go for some breakfast next. Or you might be ready and raring to go for a run or a bike ride or wrestle with your kids. But just connect in, pay attention to your legs and your hips. That wasn't really quite a typical yoga sequence per se, but I hope the extra instruction and awareness cueing and all that was helpful for you in terms of becoming that much more aware of your body. Because it all starts with awareness. It all starts with presence. And when we have that, we can be clearer on what is happening in our body, right? What's working, what's not. So then we can choose much better what we need to help ourselves to become more connected, which then in, ter in turn improves that internal mechanism, right? Improves that internal filter. And when we have that better internal filter, we're not, we're not like racing after some expert of what their opinion is, we can take the information that's around us and let it filter through our own sensitive filter. And then we can make the choice that's right for us. That's what's really, 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 really keen. All right, so if you want to dig into this more, you know where to find me. You can join me at Susie's Resource Library, which is a monthly subscription, or you can get into it deeper with me with a one-to-one -one three month series. I'm gonna put the link for the library below in the comment section. And you can direct message me about the private sessions, okay? I've added more for me because I'm getting flooded with people asking for them. So we've opened up some more spots so I've got four more spots available for me if you want to join me. I'd love to help you come deeper into your system, improve that internal filter, which is what will help you move better, breathe better, have less pain, all the rest of it. I would be so, so delighted to be your guide. So with that, mm, 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 you have a great day. Remember to come back to your breath. You've got this. See you tomorrow morning.